Hello, it's the Grape Explorer. Today we're going to jump straight into WSET level two. We're going to go through some more sample questions, the type of things you might expect if you're going to be taking that exam. Now, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you're not new, don't forget to like this video and thank you for your continued support. It really helps the channel. So WSET at level two is a 50 question multiple choice exam. You have one hour to get your questions answered. And so I'm just going to take you through the breakdown of the exam so that you can understand which sections give over the most marks. So learning outcome number one is understanding the environmental influences and grape growing options in the vineyard and how these impact style and quality. That's five marks. Learning outcome number two is understanding how winemaking and bottle aging influence the style and quality of wine. That's four marks. Understanding how environmental influences, grape growing options, winemaking and bottle aging influence the style and quality of wines made from the principal grape varieties is 19 marks. Knowing the style and quality of wines produced from regionally important black and white grape varieties is 12 marks. Learning outcome five is understanding how the production process can influence the styles of sparkling and fortified wines, that's worth six marks. And outcome number six is understanding the key principle and processes involved in the storage and service of wine and in the pairing of food and wine. So the big takeaway from there is, is clearly sections where there are 19 marks and 12 marks available. That, that's the focus really, although of course we want to be an expert at everything. Now at WSET level two, the pass rate for a distinction is 85%, which means you need to answer 43 out of those 50 questions correctly to score that distinction. So think about that as you're going into the exam. Anyway, right now we're going to get on to our first question. Compared with red wines, white wines are generally fermented at A, either higher or lower temperatures, B, the same temperature, C, higher temperatures, or D, lower temperatures. Now this is something you will learn in the book. It's a pretty common question when it comes to the exam because you do talk about winemaking processes. So in this case, the answer is D, white wines are generally fermented at lower temperatures. Right, now we're gonna look at a question which is specifically around labeling. In which of the following wine regions could a wine be labeled Grand Cru? Is it A, Chablis, B, Vouvray, C, Minervois, or D, Hermitage? I personally think this is quite a tricky question at level two, but you do spend a certain section of the learning around understanding wine labels and what some of the terminology on those wine labels mean. The difficulty with this question for me is that all of these regions are in France. A little bit obvious perhaps when you think of Grand Cru, but I do think that makes the question that all the more difficult. Usually you're able to eliminate a couple of answers immediately. But in this case, the correct answer is A, it's Chablis. Okay, next we're going to move on to a serving question. So, what is the ideal service temperature for a sweet wine? Is it A, room temperature, B, lightly chilled, C, chilled, or D, well chilled? Now, the difficulty here with this is you've got three classifications of chilled, and I think because of that you can immediately discount room temperature. That would have been particularly easy, I think. So this comes down to what have you learned from the book, particularly from a service perspective. But the correct answer here is D, well chilled. Okay, now we're going to move on to a question around the characteristics of a fortified wine. So which of the following best describes a tawny port? Is it A, golden in color with yeasty flavors? Is it B, high in tannin and acidity? Is it C, sweet with dried fruit and nutty aromas? Or is it D, sparkling and dry in style? So what's interesting about this question is, of course, we can immediately discount uh, a couple of these answers. Uh, we're talking about a fortified wine when we're thinking about port, so of course we can immediately discount sparkling. We can also really discount the, the yeasty element uh, around the flavoring for a tawny port as well. So it's gonna come down to whether or not we're picking out some of the flavor characteristics or perhaps some of the taste sensations we're getting from a tannin and acidity perspective. But in this case, the correct answer is C. This would be a sweet wine with dried, fruity and nutty aromas. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a question around the certain characteristics of a particular grape. So which of these grapes is thin-skinned? Is it A, Pinot Noir, 
B. Syrah, C. Merlot, or D. Cabernet Sauvignon? Possibly one of the easier questions you might come across at level two, and that's really because during your course, you will have sampled a number of different wines. All of these wines are actually something you will have sampled. So you will have talked about the characteristics of these grapes before they go into the wine making process. And in this case, Pinot Noir, uh, answer A, is the correct answer. That's the only thin skinned grape here, um, which is available for answer. The next question tests some of your language skills. So what does Spätleser mean? Is it a Spät is a crate used to harvest grapes? Is it B, the wine is a German Riesling? Is it C, noble rot? Or is it D, late harvest? I think this is a really good question because it does put some of your language skills to the test. And actually this is one that you need to call back and try and remember uh, what you've learned through the course, particularly with some of those tricky German phrases. Now what's interesting about this one is it tries to trip you up in my perspective by using the word Riesling in one of the answers. And we generally use the term Spätleser when we're referring to Rieslings. But actually in the case of this particular question, the direct translation of Spätleser is late harvest. So the answer is D. Now to move on to a question about a winemaking process. So why is malolactic fermentation of Chardonnay sometimes used in winemaking? A, to make the wine taste of vanilla. B, to stop fermentation early to make a sweet wine. C, to give sparkling wine fizz. And D, to soften harsh acids and bring out dairy flavors. I think this is a really good question because it gives you an opportunity to go through this quite systematically, discounting those that aren't relevant. A few of these here are all about wine making processes that give the wine certain characteristics. But in this case, the answer is D. It's to soften those harsh acids and to bring out some dairy characteristics in the wine. Now we're going to move on to an international question about sparkling wine. So what is the South African term for sparkling wine made using the traditional method? Is it bottle gegis? Is it method cap classique? Is it method champenois? Or is it traditional method? Again, I think this is quite a good question um, because at first glance, the answers are all fairly similar. Um, so it's going to come down to, again, what you've learned through, the, um, through your learning, through the WSET book, where you've been studying outside of the class. And in this case, the correct answer is B, it's Method Cap Classique. Now we're going to move into Spain and a question about a particular region, that region being Rioja. What is the correct order for the classification of Rioja wines by age? Is it A, Reserva, Criantha, Gran Reserva, Especial? Is it B, Criantha, Reserva, Gran Reserva, Exo Reserva? Is it C, Joven, Vieco, Muy Vieco or Muy Muy Vieco? Or is it D, Joven, Criantha, Reserva, Gran Reserva? I think this is a great question. I mean, putting aside uh, answer C, muy vieco, muy muy vieco, um, it really comes down to what have you learned from the book and the classifications. You know, when we're thinking about Riocas, we're usually thinking about three classifications in particular. Those are being Criantha, Reserva, and Gran Reserva. So then it's going to be, well, do we think it's Joven or do we think it's Exo Reserva? And I think that makes it a really good question. But in the case of this, the correct answer is D. It's Joven, Criantha, Reserva, Gran Reserva. Now we're going to go back to a question about wine storage. If a bottle has a natural cork, why is it helpful for the wine to always be in contact with the cork during storage? Is it A, so that you can sniff the cork after opening the bottle to see if the wine is faulty? Is it B, if the cork dries out, it may crumble into the wine when you attempt to open the bottle? Is it C, the cork may dry out and cause the wine to oxidize? Or if it, is it D, it helps the wine to adopt some of the subtle aromas from the cork? So I think this is a really good answer because on the face of it, there are actually a couple of possibilities here. Um, although there is, of course, only one correct answer. But if we just go back and look at those, because I know that that was particularly wordy. I think we can discount that it would ever adopt some of the subtle aromas from the cork. 
Uh, it's not about if the cork dries out, it may crumble into the wine when you attempt to open it. So for me, it comes down to if the cork dries out, it may cause the wine to oxidize, or is it that the uh, sommelier or the wine waiter in the restaurant likes to sniff it so they can detect if it's faulty or not? The real answer here is C. We keep the cork in contact with the wine to prevent it from drying out, and so there isn't any oxidization within the bottle. But I think that's a really great question. There we are then, 10 further questions about the WSET Level 2 exam. If you are studying for the exam at the moment, I hope these have been useful for you. If you've got any suggestions for your own questions for future videos, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you've got any general questions about studying for wine exams, please drop me a line, always happy to hear from you. For now, I'll say good luck with anyone taking it. I hope everybody got 10 out of 10 correct, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.